Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to take roots of complex numbers. Remember that every complex number can be represented in its polar form by r, which is the modulus of the complex number, times the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta, where theta is the argument, the angle that the vector makes with the x-axis. Now if I want to take the nth root of this complex number, I'm going to figure it out by defining another complex number, w, who if I raise w to the n power, I get z. In other words, the nth root of z is given by w, meaning if I raise w to the power n, I get back z. So let's write w in its polar form. Here I've written w in its polar form, given by its radius, I've called that rho, and its own argument I've called phi. And now I've defined w so that if, so that if I raise it to the nth power, I get z. So Now if I raise w to the n, if you remember how to use de Moivre's formula, or if you refer to my last video about how to take powers of complex numbers, we take the power of the modulus, so we just raise rho to the n power, and we also multiply the argument by n. So this theta, I'm sorry, this phi turns into n phi. Now since this is equal to z, we can sort of just match up the moduli and match up the trig parts. Here, I'll just solve for what rho should be by taking the nth root, so that's r to the 1 over n is equal to rho. And if I want to solve here for phi, well then I'm going to need to take the inverse cosine of both sides. That would give me theta on the left equals n phi on the right, but I have to remember when I take the inverse cosine of both sides, that's also valid for any multiple of 2 pi. So I'll say plus 2 pi k here. And this is the sort of thing you would have done in a trig class when you're taking the inverse cosine of both sides if you're not defined on a certain interval. So this is valid for all k in the natural numbers or even the integers. And now if I solve for phi here, just dividing both sides by n, I get theta plus 2 pi k over n. And now this will allow us to solve for the roots of z. And now I can write the formula. And so the nth root of z, and sometimes this is actually called w sub k, which is also equal to this, um, is equal to the nth root of r, the modulus, times cosine of theta plus 2k pi over n plus i sine of theta plus 2k pi over n. And this is for k is equal to 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n minus 1. Because once I start putting any numbers in after that, they start repeating. And so we're getting n distinct roots. When k equals 0, that's called the principal root. So this may look like an intimidating formula. Let's do an example. In this example, I want to find all the cube roots of z equals 1 plus i. So first we need to write this in its polar form, which is equal to the modulus of 1 plus i. That's the square root of the 1 squared plus the 1 squared from the i. Remember, it's the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared times the cosine of the argument of this. And if you don't remember how to do that, you can always plot this number. It's 1 in the real direction and 1 in the i direction. And if you make this triangle, this triangle has legs 1 and 1, which means that the tangent of this angle theta opposite over adjacent is equal to 1 over 1 or 1, meaning that the inverse tangent of 1 is equal to theta if you put that in a calculator or you're good with the trig identities, this is going to be pi over 4 radians or 45 degrees. So that's the argument of this number. So this is pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. And now I don't want to simplify this because I'm going to take advantage of our formula for finding the roots. The cube roots of z will be given by this, which is the cube root of square root of 2 in this case, right? 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2 square rooted, and then I have to cube root that times 
cosine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi k all over the number 3. So where is this coming from? Well, pi over 4 was the argument. I always add plus 2 pi k inside the argument, and then I divide by 3. That was the root. So if it was the fourth root, I'd be dividing by 4. But in this case, it's 3. I divide by 3. And then it's plus i sine of the same thing, pi over 4 plus 2 pi k all over 3. And we're going to write this out for k equaling 0, 1, and 2. All the numbers before 3. So all the roots are given by the collection. Um, and I'm going to write the first one first. So k equaling 0, remember that's the principal root. So if I plug 0 into this equation, uh, let's see, we'll get 2 square rooted, cube rooted will be 2 to the 6th times cosine of. I'll plug in 0 for k. That would be pi over 4 divided by 3. That's going to be pi over 12 will be the argument, plus i sine of pi over 12. That's the first one. And we should get three of these, right, if it's a cube root. Uh, the next one will be 2 to the 6th times cosine of. And this time I have to plug in 1 for k. So that would be pi over 4 plus 2 pi all over 3. And let's see, 2 pi. That's the same as 8 pi over 4. 8 plus 1 is 9 pi over 4 divided by 3 is 9 pi over 12 plus i sine of the same thing, 9 pi over 12. And we should get one more. If I plug in k equaling 2, that'll be cosine of, and now I need to plug in 2 for k right here. That would be pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 3. 4 pi is the same as 16 pi over 4. 1 plus 16 is 17 pi over 4. Divided by 3 is 17 pi over 12. And sine will get the exact same thing. And so these are our three roots which is no coincidence that it was a cubed root and we get three roots. Remember, we gotta plug in zero, one, and two in for k into this equation. And then really it's just a matter of computing the fractions of these things. And what's really interesting is that these three values, these trig values are gonna evenly divide up a unit circle, a circle, because if I started another k value, I'm actually gonna get back to pi over 12, or its equivalent. So there's only three real distinct roots here. Now, if you need to see any of this, please feel free to rewind. I know I'm throwing a lot at you at this video. In this video, you learned how to find roots of complex numbers using the polar form. I hope you'll join me next time where we'll start talking about points of the complex plane and the images that they make. Have a great day. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this series, and I'll see you next time.